News All Entertainment Network. Wherever there is a wrong to be righted, he is there. Wherever humanity gropes for that universal meaning of life, he is there. He is everywhere, for he is Commander USA. Far below a teeming shopping mall, Commander USA enters his video vault to bring you action, adventure, and zany non-stop thrills in Commander USA's groovy movies. Today's groovy movie, the beginning of the end. And now, Commander USA. Soren Superhero, Legion of Decency, retired. <laughs> I'm glad you showed up today. Why? Oh, yeah, man, today's gonna be a great kind of day. I can kind of feel it in my bones, you know? Yeah, a whole lot of excitement up in the mall, too, boy. Oh, yeah, you heard about it, didn't you? Yeah, well, today's the day of the big holiday head cheese bake-off. Yeah, man, I'm really excited, because heck, made up my specialty, some head cheese tart. What the heck happened to my head cheese tarts? Oh, Lake. Hey, wait a minute. What's this giant furball doing? Must have been a cat burglar. All right, Pussy Willow, what's the story? Who's been around? What? Yeah, must have been taking a cat now. Hey, I'll get to the bottom of this if it kills me. Bo Lefty! Lefty, boy, where? What are you doing down there, Lefty? You know Lefty, don't you? Yeah, sure. He's my hand puppet, aren't you? <laughs> hey, how you doing, pal? Yeah, hey, you're looking pretty good. Now, listen, you see anybody hanging around here? I'm missing my head cheese tarts. No, eh? Well, I don't know what... What? Hey, you're right! Ah, I forgot all about it, man! Sure, we got our own groovy man, Sherlock B., a detective at home's kit. Oh, yeah, this is great, because it helps you solve mysteries around the house, you know what I mean? Hey, look what we got here, boy. Yeah, that's like a genuine Sherlock Holmes kind of frock cape. Yeah, give me a hand there, will you left? Ah, uh, thanks, pal. Whoa. Hey. Doesn't fit quite right, huh? Must be a Baker Street Irregular, huh? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Whoa, hey, look what else they got in here. Whoa, that's a groovy Sherlock Holmes type hat. Yeah, that's the kind you can wear backwards or forwards. Whoa, let me try. Holy cats, hey, that's a pretty good fit, huh? What? Hey, look at this. Hey, it's a Mr. Watson kit. Man, let me take a look at what's in here, boy. Holy cats, Lefty, this is just right for you, pal. Look at this. You got a Mr. Watson coat? Holy cats, yeah, let's get that on you there, pal. Whoa, look at that, a Mr. Watson handlebar mustache. Oh, hey, looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, hey, look at this. You even get your own pistol over here. Now, be careful with that, huh? It's unlicensed. Hey, man, this looks like it's gonna be fun, huh? We'll get to the bottom of this mystery yet. Come on, Watson, the game's afoot. But we'll cut it down to size, eh? Ah, don't worry about it. Hey, talk about unsolved mysteries, man. Wait till you see the movie I got on today. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, you wonder how Peter Graves ever got another job after this one. Eh? Nah, heck, I'm only kidding, you know? No, Peter's actually pretty good in this one. Yeah, hey, left, give me that pull there, will you? Get the heat and radiation shield open. I gotta get that tubular guidance system greased, you know what I mean? Oh, this is a great one, boy. Yeah, take a look. It's called The Beginning of the End. Whoa! Oh, yeah, you see, Peter Graves plays this entomologist who's on loan to the Department of Agriculture. Oh, yeah, I know. Sounds scary already, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, see, he's doing, like, these experiments with fruits and vegetables and stuff, and part of his control group gets, uh, well, actually, they get a little out of control. You know? Whoa! Heads up there! Oh, yeah, and then Peter, well, he gets a little out of control himself. Yeah, whoa, that's because. Uh oh, that's because he meets up with Peggy Castle. Ooh, 
disguised as Amy Edwards, a well-dressed reporter for a great metropolitan news service, comes poking around looking for a story. Yeah, little Peter's got one for her, boy. Whoa, watch out there. Heads up. Oh, my God. oh yeah, and there's all kinds of neat cars and everything. Yeah, especially the state trooper car here. Yeah, see, they got that neat little cherry top light on it thing. Whoa, man, that's neat. Yeah, and then Peter shows this great newsreel of the 1956 Australian locust invasion. Oh! Oh, man, yeah, you can tell this is going to be exciting, eh? Well, hold on to whatever's precious, boy, because we're starting at the beginning. The beginning of the end. Whoa! Don't ever be afraid. Big Lou is here. Oh, baby, This is 254 on the Ludlow swing, reporting a 984-2. We'll be checking in in 45 minutes. 10-4, car 254, KLP 646. Pull over. I saw something. Champagne Urbana. Urbana to 254, go ahead. Car 254 to Urbana. We're investigating an accident at Junction 45 in Ludlow Cutoff. Foul play suspected. Send homicide detail. Oh, yeah. The driver may have been William Summerfield, 177 Decatur Street, Ludlow, Illinois. One of you stay on the scene. The other investigate the Ludlow address. 10-4. Car 254, KLP 646. You heard the man. Yep. 
pilot of car 88. Come in, car 88. Car 88 to Urbana. McKenzie here. Go ahead. Car 254 has failed to report. Is that car in your area? No, not here. 104, car 88. This is KLP 646, Urbana, calling car 254. Come in, car 254. Urbana to car 254. Come in, car 254. Urbana to car 254. Come in, car 254. Hello, I'm at Ludlow. The whole town's destroyed. Everybody's gone. You gotta do something. You won't believe this. Send help. Lots of help. Quick. lady just follow the arrows any chance of getting through nope what happened look lady just detour will you please Tell him to take that detail out of there. The old man is sending a replacement. Right. I'm sorry, soldier. I should have explained. I'm Audrey Ames, National Wire Service. Yes, ma'am. How do I get there? Sorry, my orders are to let no one through. Well, that surely doesn't include the press. I'm sorry, ma'am. No one is what the old man said. But was it very bad? Many get hurt? Look, lady, you're not going to fish any information out of me. Now, why don't you get back on the main road? It's about a mile south. No pictures allowed. Look, you have no right to do that. Sorry, ma'am. I'd like to see your commanding officer, please. Where could I find him? You'll find him in Paxton. He headquarters there. 
I'll leave your camera at the road by. Mr. Hetherton? Holy gosh, look at all this mail, boy. Hey, let's take a look at one of these, huh? Let's see, where's this from? O'Fallon, Missouri. Jerry A. Tapley, huh? Yeah, let's see what Jerry has to say here. Oh, holy gosh, let's see. Dear Commander USA, my boy Sean and I watch your show all the time. I'm 38 and he's four. Yeah, you got a nice handwriting for a 38-year-old there, Jerry. Let's see, how about a bumper sticker for my truck? If you have any, here's a buck for it. What? Holy yeah. Ah. A little joke, huh, Jerry? Yeah. Kind of funny there. Yeah, he says, anyone who wears an outfit like yours has a lot of guts. <laughs> yeah, I guess the spandex does accentuate that a little. Hey, thanks a lot for writing there, Jerry. Oh, yeah, that's a swell letter. Hey, you want to write to the commander? Oh, sure, it's easy, man. All you got to do is write to Commander USA, Post Office Box 3966, New York, New York, 10185. Sure. This USA Network program is brought to you by Carefree Sugarless Gum. Now, with more flavor than ever, helps fight cavities, too. Feeling good about yourself, feeling carefree. Much more flavor than ever before, it's more flavor, carefree. Carefree Bubblegum now has more flavor. It's like no other sugar-free. There's a great new feeling with Carefree Sugarless Gum. It's got more flavor than ever. And now, test proved, chewing Carefree after snacking actually helps fight cavities. From the glitter of Hong Kong, the quiet beauty of Kyoto, from the lovely island of Maui come the inspirations for my new Suzy Wan dinners. Just add your shrimp, beef or chicken to my long grain rice, unique spices and special sauces. You create extraordinary sweet and sour chicken, oriental shrimp or teriyaki beef in just 10 minutes. Let Suzy Wan bring excitement to your table. New Suzy Wan dinner recipes make the ordinary extraordinary in just 10 minutes. The best part about running is stopping. But I do it because it makes me feel good. And it works. Same thing goes for my antiperspirant. I use real because nothing works like it. It feels good. Imagine an antiperspirant that feels good going on. It's soft, smooth, and dry right away. Not like roll-ons. Real feels good and it works. Just like running. Real feels as good as it works. Real antiperspirant. By Menon. Mmm, this is just so delicious. I just don't know when I've had salad as good as this. I just... Bacos? Even better. Bacony Bacos makes every bite better. Watch out for the all-new laughs when Check It Out checks in for its third season. Great! Terrific! Right on. Followed by Sanchez of Bel Air. I like it. It's the funniest hour of original comedy on cable. Be there, fool! Premiering tomorrow at 5 on USA. He's the modern master of fantasy and suspense. Get in out of that night before it grabs you. Ray Bradbury Theater, premiering October 17th on USA. Stacy Keach. Listen, this is serious business, pal. The new Mike Hammer, premiering today at 7 on USA. will continue to be rooted around the Ludlow area according to special orders Good morning. Table 6. Good morning. I'd like to see your commanding officer, please. Oh, I'm sorry, but the colonel's busy. Perhaps Captain Barton can help you. Sentry. Huh? This will cover the whole situation you asked for, sir. Thanks, Lieutenant. Sit down, please. Are you the Audrey Ames who covered Korea for that picture magazine? That's right. I read the book you wrote after the war. Liked it very much. Oh, thank you. You're with National Wire Service now. 
I was on my way to Chanute Field to do a picture story on a new jet plane they're unveiling, and uh, I ran into a roadblock. So? Well, Captain, there was a town beyond that roadblock. A town that isn't there anymore. Until we find out exactly what happened, we'd like to avoid publicity. You have any idea what happened? I'm sorry, Miss Williams. Captain, you can't suppress a story like this. We're not trying to, Miss Ames, but until we have more facts... Look, will you give us your word you won't release a story until we give the go-ahead? You have my word. Sometime during the night, the town of Ludlow was completely demolished. The town's population, about 150 people, vanished. Vanished? No bodies, nothing. Well, there must be some trace. I know it's hard to believe, Miss Ames, but a special detail combed through the wreckage for two solid hours and couldn't find a thing. Was it an explosion? We don't know. A hundred and fifty people just don't vanish into thin air. We're still trying to find out what happened. If you'd like to sit in. Yes, thank you, I would. Dave, what time did you leave Ludlow last night? Must have been after 11 o'clock. My son-in-law watched the television news at 10.30, so I sat there and watched that. And my daughter wanted me to sit there and talk a while. Then I got to thinking that I had to get up early. So I took off. Did you notice anything strange or unusual about the house or about the way the family acted? No, same as always. When you were driving out of town, nothing out of the way in the street, the building or the sky? No unusual light, some sound or movement? Well, I heard something sound like thunder. And about midnight, a plane went over. All right, Dave. I can call on you again if I need you? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Edna? Is that the telephone company's official transcripts? I put through the last call to Ludlow at 11.59 p.m. Mm -hmm. When did you first notice anything wrong with the Ludlow connection? 4.45 this morning. I phoned the company linesman to go out there right away. So the telephone lines could have gone down anywhere between 11.59 and 4.45. All right, Edna, thanks. You've been very helpful. Oh, uh, Colonel Sturkey. Miss Ames, National Wire Service. How do you do? Uh, Audrey Ames, I've read a lot of your stuff, seen a lot of your photographs. Yes? Set to go, sir, whenever you're ready. I'll be right there. I hope you understand our problem, our need to keep this quiet. Yes, Captain, brief me. If anyone wants me, I can be reached in Ludlow by radio. Yes, sir. What chances of me going along? Not this trip, maybe later. In any case, not until we know what's out there. Oh, by the way, Colonel, my camera was taken from me at the roadblock by one of your men. I'll give orders to have it released. Oh, there has to be a logical explanation for this. A town of 150 people just doesn't disappear. This one did. to place a person-to-person -person call, please, to Mr. Norman Taggart, Editor-in-Chief of National Wire Service. The number is Murray Hill 44836. In what city, please? New York. Odd. you wind up that jet plane story already? I'm not on the jet story. Norm, listen, I'm on to something I think can be real big. Mm-hmm. Where? Oh. Brother. Huh? What do you mean we can't print it? I've given my word to hold off for a while. Now listen, Norm. A plane flew over Ludlow last night about midnight. Just about the time the lid blew off. Check on it. And, uh, check Washington. See if they had an atomic installation in the Ludlow area. Okay. Call me back as soon as you have anything, right? Goodbye.
Sorry, miss. You can't. Oh, it's you again. I know I can't. But I'd like to have my camera back, please. Colonel Sturgeon said he was going to speak to somebody. Hey, Corporal. Matthias. She wants her camera back. Hello, Norm. What's the score? Wrong track, baby. The airlines confirm a commercial liner over Ludlow at 12.03 last night. And there are no atomic installations, secret or otherwise, within 75 miles of Ludlow. Well, it was a possibility. The only people who have been playing around with uh, radioactive materials in your vicinity is the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Department of Agriculture? Yeah, they've got an experimental project just outside Paxton. U.S. Department of Agriculture, Illinois Experimental Station. Okay, I've got that. I'll, I'll keep in touch. but I guess he didn't hear me. Oh, he's a deaf mute. Working with radiation can be dangerous. Accident last year cost him his speech and his hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking for the project director. I'm the project director. My name's Ed Wainwright. What can I do for you? Oh, excuse me a minute. I'm sorry, Frank. <laughs> Nothing to worry about, just a slight catastrophe. You have these catastrophes very often? <laughs> All the time. It's hard to keep these little things from getting in. These are snails. Last summer it was caterpillars, and after that it was grasshoppers by the drove. And just last week it was beetles. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, Mr. Wainwright, I'm Audrey Ames. I'm with National Wire Service. I suppose you've heard about what happened in Ludlow. Yes. I'm trying to find out what was responsible and it occurred to me that radiation of some sort might have caused the destruction out there. No, I don't think so. Here. We're the only people around here using radioactive materials. And isotopes aren't explosive. So I'm afraid your answer isn't here. Oh, I see. Now tell me, is this thing really a strawberry? Yes. And these are tomatoes. This, we hope, is the future of the American farmer. And for that matter, all farmers everywhere. Can you eat them? No, not yet. But we hope to develop one day a hybrid that can be eaten. How is it there hasn't been any publicity on this? Oh, there have been a few stories in the farm journals, but to most of the public, these giants are just freaks of nature. No practical value. Well, how do they get so big? Well, radiation causes photosynthesis, that is, the, the growing process to continue night and day. The radioisotopes act as a, a sort of artificial sun, sun that never sets. It's fascinating. Now, tell me, what's he doing? Well, that's plant food, essential minerals. Keeps the plants from burning themselves out. They have to be fed constantly. Actually, the fruit would grow much larger if we didn't limit the stimulation. Maybe you'd like to do a story on us. I'd be glad to tell you more about the work. Thank you very much. I'd be very interested, but... Well, right now I'm working on this Ludlow story. Thanks again. Right. Goodbye. Bye. I don't know, pal. Whoa, hey, there you are, boy. 
Now I ran into a little problem here. No, I was just telling Lefty, excuse me, I mean Mr. Watson here. Yeah, I was just telling him, yeah, I'm kind of stuck on the case. You know, the case of the missing head cheese tarts, boy. Yeah, so I was looking it up in my Sherlock Holmes official manual here. And it says right in the book, the first thing you should do is round up the suspects. Figured that was a great idea, yeah. Yeah, we'll take a look through my own rogues gallery here. Hey, thanks, Left. Just bring her over there. Uh-oh, look at this guy. Holy cats, yeah. It's the Marquis de Suds. Yeah, he wants to hand laundry up in the mall, boy. Yeah, you can really lose your socks in that place. Well, maybe not. Hey, this could be it. Aha, uh -huh. the infamous Bugsy Malloy. Ooh, yeah. No, he's the exterminator up in the mall. Yeah, he owns that place, Rats Are Us. Nah, maybe not. Uh-oh, maybe it's Phil Donahue. Nah. Uh-oh. This could be it. That's right, pal. This could be it. Miss Rose Rosewood. Yes, only a few years ago, she was in cahoots with my old nemesis, Moriarty. They conspired against me to get the recipe for my head cheese tarts. Uh-oh. This could be it. All right, Watson. The game's afoot. We'll cut it down to size. <laughs> Calcium. Now orange juice is even more nutritious. We are the taste that starts your day. Minute Maid. Healthy bodies need calcium, and every glass has more calcium than a glass of milk. You can't buy a more nutritious orange juice. Minute Maid. Minute Maid. We are the sunshine of your life. Introduce your carpet to a fresh new day. Hammer Carpet Deodorizer is now improved with exclusive vacuum right to keep carpets cleaner than other carpet deodorizers. Keeps them fresh, too. Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer penetrates deeper and destroys odors, while vacuum right repels dirt. Use it each time you vacuum for fresh and cleaner carpets the Arm & Hammer way. Keep your carpet fresh as a brand new day the Arm & my daughter left a lipstick in her pocket, and before I noticed, I washed it, and it went through all our clothes. What a mess. So I grabbed Liquid Tide. Compared to another leading liquid, Liquid Tide gets out lots of tough stains, even lipstick. Not one mark of lipstick remained. Thanks. Mrs. Judy Davis. It's tough to beat Tide for getting out tough stains like this. If it's gotta be clean, it's gotta be Tide. Mayday! Mayday! I'm being attacked by zits! Defend your face with Oxy-10. It zeroes in on zits and destroys them. That's all of them. Let's head for home. Oxy-10. We're winning the war against zits. Wake up as if you didn't have an allergy, with no sneezing. Clear eyes, wide awake. Dimetane Extend Tabs gives you all night relief that's still working in the morning when you need it most. Dimetane Extend Tabs. Part Institute of Technology, a dynamic private college with over 50 major programs of study, from fine arts to technology to medicine, a college with affordable tuition, realistic admissions policies, and generous financial aid, a college where a quality education is readily available to help you make it in the real world. The New York Institute of Technology, opportunity and excellence for today and tomorrow. Swing into the 87th season with Keith Hernandez and the World Champion Mets on Sports Channel. Nine two zero zero eight. You here? 
there? Well, he wouldn't let me inside, so... Oh, Colonel, Springfield is on the line. Colonel, you just got back from Ludlow. You said after you got back, I could go. I said maybe. Well, how about it? Tomorrow it'll be open to the press. Oh, Colonel, be fair. I played ball with you. Give me the jump on the other reporters who'll be in here. At least let me take some pictures in Ludlow. I promise I won't put them on the wire till tomorrow. Well, I guess you rate that. For effort, anyway. Pardon, take my seams to Ludlow. And I hope you have a strong stomach. We're going to take some pictures in Ludlow. If uh, we're not back in 15 minutes, better come in after us. Yes, sir. Let him through. calendars to tell age. I could use ruins to count mine. I was 25 when I went through Seoul after it was shelled. I was 20 when I took my camera into Cologne and Berlin after World War II. Must be used to it by now. Captain, there are some things you never get used to. drink to wipe away some memories. Good way to get rid of the jitters. I know a little place. How do 150 people vanish into thin air? Well, around this part of the country, things seem to have a way of vanishing. Only a couple of months ago, it was a warehouse. Kind of fell apart overnight, just like Ludlow. Decide to come back and do a story on us? Well, no. As a matter of fact, I came back for some help. I'd like you to do me a favor. Anything I can. Remember the warehouse that was destroyed about three months ago? Uh huh. I want you to take me to see it. Oh, well, I, uh, I'd like to, but I've got too much work in my hands right now. How about tomorrow? Three months ago, a warehouse was destroyed, and the one person in it vanished. This morning, Ludlow was destroyed. All the people in it vanished. Don't you see a possible tie-up? Possible, I suppose. What do you want me to do? Just ride out there with me and take a look at it. <laughs> I don't understand what good that'll do. The authorities investigated it thoroughly. Well, the sheriff thinks in terms of crime and publicity. You're a scientist. You think in terms of cause and effect. Maybe you'll see something that the sheriff missed. <laughs> well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Still, I, I don't know. What's he saying? <laughs> he says that, uh, that your lips are easy to read, that your theory makes you a very bright girl in his book, and that he'd like to go along with us. Good. <laughs> You barge into people's lives and drag them off to places they don't really want to go, aren't you sort of in danger of becoming unpopular? That's an occupational hazard. How'd you pick such an occupation? I think it sort of picked me. I guess I was just born inquisitive. Ever since I can remember, I wanted to know the why and wherefore of just about everything I saw. I inherited my knack with the camera from Dad. My curiosity supplied the nose for news, and the camera supplied the memory. <laughs> so there you have it. What about you? Have you always been interested in science? Oh, I guess I always have been in one way or another. I used to fool around with radios and anything electrical when I was a kid. I was a radar officer during the war, and then I went into this when I got out. 
<laughs> ah, yes, I remember now that every time I read one of your articles, it was dateline from some area of flood or famine or war. Made me realize what a sheltered life we scientists really lead. Sheltered? Look what happened to Frank. Some force had to push these walls out from the inside. Think it was an explosion? No, it couldn't have been. Any explosion big enough to destroy this warehouse would certainly have been heard in Ludlow. How much have they kept stored here? Wheat. Almost a million bushels. A lot of wheat. And there was surplus to keep the market from being oversupplied. Doesn't it strike you as a little strange that out of all that wheat there's not a grain left anywhere? No, that's nature's way, Audrey. Birds probably cleaned up the leavings. What is it, Ed? You see how barren this ground is? Well, I don't know. I've seen horses leave it like this. Well, this is deeper than horses go and much more thorough. Practically down to the roots. The horses pick and choose. They leave patches. Mm. But this is completely barren. Well, leave it to old Frank. He'll make a botanist out of me yet. You're head of a government lab and you need lessons in botany? Well, I try to teach him what I can about my field of study. He tries to teach me what he can about his. Aren't you a botanist? No, no, I'm an entomologist. The study of insects. Well, then how come you're working with plants? Well, the, uh, the existence and development of plants and insects are very closely related. They're highly dependent on one another. As a plain matter of fact, one couldn't live without the other. And that's why I can't understand. Ground like this is usually teeming with insects. This area is completely devoid of it. I think I'd like to get some shots of this. I'm going back to the car for my camera. All right. Here, let me help you. What was that? I don't know. Hopper, please. Well, hey, there you are. Boy, this movie's getting pretty exciting now, huh? Yeah. Ed and Audrey got out just in time there, boy. On when you see this next part. Yeah, like right at the end of this next part, Peter Graves has one of those nice kind of sincere moments, you know, when he gives Peggy this little speech. Oh, yeah, and he explains the title of the movie and everything. Oh, yeah, you're really gonna love it, boy. Hey, that's looking good. Hmm. Hey, oh, whoa, can't wait. Oh, man, 
that. <laughs> hey, nice touch there, Seth. Hey, it's looking at you, kid. Mmm, cool and crunchy. Mm. A little bit of antennae there. <laughs> Enjoy extra sugar-free gum. You get extra flavor, extra fun. Get extra sugar-free gum. Extra, the only leading sugar-free gum with NutraSweet, gives you extra refreshing flavor that lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra flavor for that extra long ride. Extra flavor for that extra long ride. When you chew it, extra, the extra fresh flavor lasts an extra, extra, extra long time. Extra last, extra long. Nothing could be finer than the taste of Aunt Jemima in the morning. Wake up, Susie. Aunt Jemima's taking care of breakfast. So get your toaster. Nah, she's not making toast. She's making waffles with that fresh off the griddle taste. Crispy golden outside, tender inside. From a toaster. Nothing could be finer than the taste of Aunt Jemima in the This salad is unbelievable. It's um, Bacos. It's even better. Bacony Bacos makes every bite better. Mm. Push it, hold it to the limit. New Alberto hairspray. Now I've designed my hairspray for hold. That goes to the limit. It's a way you do. Alberto, hold it to the limit. Alberto hairspray. Or does the swell bounce remind me of spring? Here at the lake, when everything is new. And every morning I come out, and I ride my bike around the lake. And that's how bald smells. It's just natural. It just smells so fresh. Yeah. Outdoor fresh bounce. Jump in! It smells great, doesn't it? Jump in! When you've got diarrhea, you want relief you can be sure of. It worked, and fast. They're talking about new Diarade. Remarkable Diarade liquid stops diarrhea and cramps fast, and it's so effective. A dose is only two teaspoons, not all the stuff I used to take. How does Diarade do it? With a clinically proven ingredient approved by scientific experts, and no other leading liquid has it. Not The Geiger counters show no radioactivity to speak of, sir. Only background. There's got to be an explanation somewhere. I've got your explanation for you, Tom. Ed. Now listen, you've known me ever since I came to Paxton. You know I'm not given to hysteria, and you've got to listen to me with an open mind. Take it easy, Ed. Locusts. What are you talking about? I'm talking about giant locusts. Giant locusts are responsible for all of this. <laughs> are you nuts? No evidence of any explosion, Colonel. The buildings look more like they were hit with a battering ram. We found these guns at the scene. The kind people keep in their homes. And they've been fired. Okay, but then... Now listen, Tom. These are eight feet tall, some even bigger. They're vicious, merciless killers. Now, Ed. Lieutenant. Send the phone Springfield again. Tell him I'm still waiting for those specialists. Yes, sir. Frank Johnson is dead. He was killed not half an hour ago. It was horrible. Obviously, you're both under a strain. Won't you listen? You've got to get some soldiers out there before more people are killed. Miss Ames. The governor asked me to exercise discretion in dealing with you. Please don't make it any harder for me than it is. You have to believe us. Listen, you've seen the giant plants out at the lab. Are you trying to tell me you bred these things? In a sense, I did, yes. Some locusts must have gotten into the lab, and they ate some of the plants or some of the radioactive plant food. Well, their cell division accelerated immediately. That is, they started to grow abnormally fast. Well, they had to have a constant food supply to sustain this growth. So, a couple of months ago, they wandered into the grain elevator outside of town. When they grew to this giant size, they pushed their way out. Oh, they just pushed the building down. Yes. Each one of them has the strength of ten men. There are probably two or three hundred of them. So, last night, not satisfied with eating the grain, they came to Ludlow. Yes. <laughs> Even if I went for your story about the size, it would be hard to believe they'd attack people. Sergeant, that report come in from the chemists? No, not yet, sir. Why won't you listen? I am listening. We saw Frank Johnson killed by a giant locust. Sure, and there are reliable people who've also seen flying saucers and weird little men from Mars. Well, take another look at that town out there. Or have you found the answer? Lieutenant? Yes, sir. I'm taking a detail out for a look around. You're to keep radio contact. I want ten men. Get them on the truck. Yes, sir. All right, Ed. You can show me the exact spot where you saw 
well, whatever it was you saw. Oh, no. Well, after all, it's his grasshopper. Crazy grasshoppers. Why don't they give us nets instead of rifles? All right, tell the people to spread out. All right, man, fan out. Here's the spot, Tom. Where's the body? There isn't any body. Just like Ludlow. All right, man, the end of the woods. What's it to pull a plow, huh? Truck? Yeah. I don't like this place. Ah, take it easy. You know, glass offers a good eating. Yeah? Much better catch it. Nah, no kidding. I ate him once down in Mexico. You, know, you better watch your step. They'll have a good even. something. Mr. Wainwright's a scientist. He's trained to see things right. Well, these days they blame the atom for everything. Bad health, bad crops, bad weather. Now it's grasshoppers. They couldn't have just dreamed up this guy Frank being knocked off. Nah.
also get some air support. We'll bomb them out of that forest. What are you going to do? I'm going in there and wipe out every last one. They'll slaughter you. Not this time. I want light artillery brought up with Company H. You don't have enough men. There'll be three regiments out there tomorrow by 0300. You don't understand. You still don't have enough men. Not enough men for a couple of hundred locusts? There are more than a couple of hundred. But you said before... That, that was that... before I heard them screech. The noise they made convinces me there are more. How many are there? I don't know. There could be countless numbers. I think you better call in the regular army, Tom. Where would I get off calling for the regular army to handle some oversized grasshoppers? Why, they'd section eight me right out of the service. Lieutenant, yes. take charge of the east sector. Yes. You're making a mistake, Tom. I'm afraid he doesn't understand how serious this is. Well, after all, he knows what the military is capable of. Well, that's just it. He has faith in regimental firepower because he's seen it work. But he's never come up against an enemy like this before. Well, you've done all you can. No, no, I haven't. In a way, I feel responsible, Audrey. But he's in deadly danger if those locusts break out of the forest. What are you going to do? I'm going to Washington. Maybe the Army people will listen to me. I'll go with you. Maybe I can help. I saw them, too. All right. They've got to convince them, Audrey. We may be witnessing the beginning of an era that'll mean the complete annihilation of man. Annihilation? Annihilation. The beginning of the end. <laughs> What the mail's here? Whoa! Holy shit! Hey, this is great, man! Look at all... Whoa! Hey, maybe I should read one of these, eh? Yeah, let's see, where's this... Harrisburg, Pennsylvania! Hey, one of my favorite places, boy. From Peabody and the Wench? Oh, hey, this sounds interesting already, doesn't it? Yeah, Peabody and the Wench. Let's see, dear commander. Listen, we watch your show all the time. We really like it. We've seen you make those gourmet meals with your microwave vision. Oh, yeah. Since you have microwave vision, does that mean you also have laser lips? Laser lips? Whoa, yeah. Talk about burning kisses, eh? Well, actually, Peabody and the Wench, you know, my whole bilabellary is pretty much run at a million. Although I do have a filling in one of my back molars that picks up radio signals every once in a while. Yeah, mostly country western. Huh? Hey, but thanks a lot for writing. Yeah. Hey, do you want to write to the commander? Ah, sure, it's a snap, boy. All you got to do is write to Commander USA Post Office Box 3966, New York, New York, 10185. Sure. Oils giving away 20 new Jeep Comanche 4x4 sport trucks. And with a Comanche, there's no telling where you'll end up. Plus, Pennzoil's giving $3 a case or 20 cents a quart back in rebates. To enter, mail in the rebate entry form that's on every bottle of quality Pennzoil motor oil. Or look for this display for details. The Pennzoil Comanche 4x4 giveaway. With quality Pennzoil and a Jeep Comanche, there's no telling where you'll end up. There's only one man who can tell the world all that goes on in pro wrestling. I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you about the world of pro wrestling. Call me. I'm telling you. This number's for you, you, you. Ah, Mom, you raised a great son. <laughs> There'll be no more calls for you, Lou. My boys and I are taking you in. Get it. Come on, Come on. I got a right to make one phone call, and so do you. Lou Albano's Wrestling Hotline, available until further notice for a hearing. Call now. $1.50 for the first minute, 35 cents each additional minute. Around here, the early bird gets the ego. Gently put in the ego as not to arouse any sleeping taste buds. <laughs> Cleverly divert its delicious aroma from filling their dreams with crisp golden ego waffles. Hi, Dad. Yeah. What's for breakfast? Uh, nothing. <laughs> and I can have this? Oh, let go my ego. Ego waffles from Kellogg's, part of this nutritious breakfast. Gently put in the ego. You Airplane. Tonight, your hair will look its best with finesse. Perfect, whether you need a little or a lot. Nothing less than beautiful. Nothing less than finesse. You know what? This is my most favorite ice cream in the whole world. Surprise, it's Yo Play. New Yo Play soft frozen yogurt. 
finally, a way to lose weight that's brought to you by nature. It's the Fiber Full Weight Loss Plan. Fiber Full tablets are made from natural fiber. So the Fiber Full Plan helps you eat less and lose weight. Fiber Full, the natural way to lose weight. This woman has an irritating rash that's inflamed and itchy. She's using maximum strength Cortisone 5 to go deep below the skin's surface. Cortisone 5 gets under the itch for soothing relief and help in healing. Cortisone 5. Swing into the 87th season with Keith Hernandez and the world champion Mets on Sports Channel. College means the opportunity to grow, to learn new ideas and pursue exciting challenges. At the New York Institute of Technology, excellence and opportunity combine to provide an educational and social experience designed to meet your individual needs. Our dedicated faculty and staff provide the warm and supportive environment so necessary for the fulfillment of your very special personal goals. The New York Institute of Technology, a private college where the focus is always on you. Association. This gentleman is the enemy. This locust, more commonly known as the grasshopper, is almost identical to the giant locust of Ludlow, except for its size and the fact that the giant's wings fail to develop. They cannot fly. The locust is intelligent, but strong. Locusts follow a leader. Like the bee and the ant, they're able to communicate with each other. This communication or call is produced by the hind legs. This is the 1956 Australian locust plague. Covered an area of 400 square miles. We've been plagued by locusts since biblical times. We've tried various forms of combating them. As a matter of fact, in our own country, the early settlers of the Massachusetts Bay Colony armed themselves with bundles of brush and drove millions of locusts into the sea. Now today, despite the fact that we've developed powerful insecticides, the locust still inflicts damages to the tune of $25 million in the United States alone. California, Colorado, Texas, even this small locust will attack a man. It has two powerful jaws that are edged with sharp teeth. It will kill other insects and devour them. If no other insects are available, it becomes a cannibal, turning on its own kind. Now you've seen what the locust can do in its normal size, smaller than your thumb. Imagine, if you will, a locust that's grown bigger than a man and is continuing to grow, some larger than others, but each one a deadly killer. I hope you realize we haven't much time. You are a scientist, Mr. Wainwright. You know what locusts can do. I'm a soldier, I know what guns can do. I feel secure the Illinois National Guard can handle this situation. Did you want to say something, General Hanson? No, sir. I was greatly impressed with your presentation, Wainwright. I'm sure all of us were. Thank you very much for coming. I'm afraid my presentation didn't impress you quite enough, General. I don't understand you. I mean that when the locusts start to move out of that forest, I'm not sure you'll be able to stop them. What are you suggesting we do, Mr. Wainwright? Hit them with everything you've got, now. You need more men, a lot more men. You need tanks and heavy artillery. As of now, the full strength of the Illinois National Guard is in the line surrounding the Ludlow, Illinois forest. As I said before, Mr. Wainwright, you are a scientist. Why not leave the fighting to the military? Urgent call from Paxton, Illinois, sir. General Short here. Yes. Yes, I see. Thank you. Matt, you will fly to Paxson with Mr. Wainwright. We'll take charge of operations. Mr. Wainwright, I owe you an apology. The locusts have broken through our defense lines. Thousands of casualties. Our troops are reorganizing to prevent Paxson itself from being overrun. The 
no position in the suburbs of Paxton must be held. Otherwise, the 100 miles between Paxton and Chicago will lie open. General, we can't land in Paxton, sir. Why not? It just came over the radio, sir. Giant locusts have overrun Paxton at 1400. these positions held. I want them held at all costs, if humanly possible. And Captain, have your map people immediately turn out 300 overlays, showing the Chicago defense line is tentatively set. Yes? Major Everett. What about Squadron 12? They haven't reported in yet, General. Well, let me know the moment you're here. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll be with you in a moment. Bill, you'll proceed at once to temporary GHQ Central Sector and assume command. Norm, you will order the 81st Armored Division to proceed without delay from Fort Sheridan to Chicago. Have the CG report to me upon arrival. Request the Defense Department to alert the following divisions, the 1st Armored, the 40th, the 1st Airborne, the 92nd, and the 76th. Now, what's your problem? Food. At the rate refugees are pouring into Chicago, General, our emergency stocks won't last long. Toxaphene is one we haven't tried. How good is it? Almost as powerful as chlordane. All right, ship 2,000 gallons out to the base. Excuse me. Hello. They're speaking. Squadron 12 just reported. They say they came down on the deck and practically drowned the enemy in insecticide. The chlordane didn't even slow them down. You'll have to come up with something stronger. I'll do my best, General. Goodbye. Stuff's no good. Forget it. Doesn't it? I thought you went back to New York. Well, the big story's here. Well, look, your editor called you back because it was too dangerous. I wanted to be here. Nothing we've done so far. Insecticides, fire, bombs, nothing has done any good. In so little time. Well, you're doing everything you can. Well, everybody is, but it's not good enough. The time will come when the beasts will inherit the earth. five divisions to the west and south of Chicago, General Hansen is confident that he can keep the menace at bay. Units of the Air Forces and Marines are moving into position to back up those forces already deployed by the Army. Now, the one advantage our forces hold over the enemy is that they always reveal their intention to attack. Before every attack, the locusts send forth this warning in the form of a high-pitched screech. Now, this screech increases in intensity until it reaches ear-shattering proportions. And it's when this screech reaches its full intensity that the locusts attack. Looks suspiciously suspicious to me, pal. You know what? Whoa, hey, hey, there you are, 
cowboy. Yeah, I was just telling Lefty, excuse me, I mean Mr. Watson here, yeah, that we're getting close to the trail, boy. Yeah, we're picking up some clues. No, I was over at Rose, Rosewood's Rose Covered Cottage, boy, just kind of, you know, looking around and look what I found. It's right, a group of overripe bananas found right by the right front tire of Rose Rosewood Stutz Bearcat motor car. Then, a little more discovery turned up this rather old container of homogenized milk found below the gazebo of the herb garden. Ooh, finally, oh, the leftover remnants of a jar of gooseberry blossom honey. Something's gonna turn up here. You know what we're gonna do? That's right. It's time to sift the evidence. Oh, okay, pal. Let's see if we find a clue here. Ah, whoa. Let's make that around there. Yeah, I think something's coming through. Got it left? Yeah, good. Oh, nice. nice. Oh, hey. Something's happening down there, pal. I can see. Whoa! Hey, lefty boy. Reach in there, will you? No, right in the corner. That's it. That's it. We're getting close now, boy. You see that? That's a very special sugar crystal. I think the problem is solved. Rose Rosewood. Her name is Matchstick. <laughs> This USA Network program is brought to you by Bacos. Only Bacos has that bacony Bacos crunch that makes salads taste even better. Mmm, this is just so delicious. I just don't know when I've had salad as good as this. I can Bacos? Even better. Bacony Bacos makes every bite better. Introduce your carpet to a fresh new day. Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer is now improved with exclusive Vacuum Right to keep carpets cleaner than other carpet deodorizers. Keeps them fresh, too. Arm & Hammer Carpet Deodorizer penetrates deeper and destroys odors, while Vacuum Right repels dirt. Use it each time you vacuum for fresh and cleaner carpets the Arm & Hammer way. Keep your carpet fresh as a brand new day the Arm & Defend your face with Oxy-10. It zeroes in on zits and destroys them. That's all of them. Let's head for home. Oxy-10. We're winning the war against zits. People go here. And people go there. Hey, people don't always like to share. Of all the things that people do, there's one thing that's so, so true. They do. More people sleep on silly posture. The New York Institute of Technology, a dynamic private college with over 50 major programs of study, from fine arts to technology to medicine. A college with affordable tuition, realistic admissions policies, and generous financial aid. A college where a quality education is readily available to help you make it in the real world. The New York Institute of Technology. Opportunity and excellence for today and tomorrow. Seventh season with Keith Hernandez and the World Champion Mets on Sports Channel. And 2008.
Yeah, I was getting a little hungry, so I decided to call that new place up in the mall. Yeah, it's called the Merry Snail Man. Yeah, hello, Merry. Yeah, it's the commander. No, Commander USA. No, you know, down in the video. But yeah, that's right. Listen, Mary, I was getting a little hungry. I figured I was in the mood for some escargot to go. Yeah, you want to send down a bucket of mediums? Yeah, okay. Hey, send down a small root beer with that, too, okay? Okay. Hey, we'll get back to the movie right after this, okay? Okay. Hey, listen, Mary, does that come with fries? We've got every available man on the line, Major, and I think there's no question but what we'll be. this program for an important announcement. The giant locusts have reached the Chicago South Side and nearby suburbs. I repeat, the giant locusts have reached the Chicago South Side and nearby suburbs. Keep calm. Take shelter in basements. Take shelter in basements. Do not panic. Attention, please. Attention, please.
General? Yeah, Miss Ames. Draw up a chair and sit down. I sent for you because of a new development that may be favorable to us. The Locusts have stopped their advance. They're huddled in the alleys and buildings just outside the loop. The Locusts got cold. When the temperature drops below 68 degrees, they just stop moving. Well, maybe now is the time we could move in and destroy them. Well, they aren't in hibernation, sir. They'll move if they're provoked, and they're just as deadly as ever. When the sun comes out tomorrow, they'll be active again. The Air Force is standing by with a B-52 loaded with an atom bomb. You can't drop an atom bomb on Chicago. Washington has given me authority to do just that, as a last contingency. If the bomb is dropped early tomorrow, there'll be no loss of life. The city will be evacuated by then. Well, what about the property? There'll be a billion dollars worth of damage in a site that's too contaminated to rebuild on. I realize that. But if we don't drop the bomb, Chicago will almost certainly fall. The bomber crew is alerted for a drop at dawn. If we don't come up with something by then, I'll make a final check with Washington and relay their okay. Isn't there a chance the locusts could die in the night of the cold? No, not at this time of year. It takes 24 hours of exposure at 14 degrees. Isn't there some way you could drive them into the lake? In Washington, you said the settlers did that. Settlers? Hmm? Oh. Oh, the early settlers in Massachusetts did literally drive them into the sea. But they weren't dealing with giants. Wait a minute. We can't drive them. Not drive. But we could attract them. Attract. If we could reproduce their call, General, it might work. It just might work. A call for insects? Have you ever been duck hunting, General? The duck call? Yes. There's one for bees, too. They use it in apiaries. It might work. What do you need? Well, let me see. I need, uh, I need an audio oscillator. I need an audio two. Two audio amplifiers, the most powerful you can get. I need an oscilloscope. I need some high-frequency radio equipment. And a boat. A fast boat. Well, whatever you need, we'll get. Well, well, there's one thing I have to get myself. Something that will tell me when I've succeeded. Well, what's that? A live giant grasshopper. Man, this is some movie, huh? Nice! Real exciting, but, you know, at the same time, it kind of makes me nostalgic, you know? Yeah, I was thinking about the time I was out in Hartwell, Nebraska. Oh, what a great place. Yeah, they used to have, like, the annual grasshopper ball almost every year, you know? Well, I mean, during the early 40s, like, they had to cancel it a couple of times because, uh... Well, actually, because there were only two men in town. Yeah, and one of them was, uh, well, he just wasn't interested, you know? Yeah, he didn't like grasshoppers for some reason or other, you know? Oh, but heck, in its heyday, the grasshopper ball was really something. Oh, I mean, they'd go all out, you know? And, yeah, they'd get a jug band and a dance call, you know? And then right in the middle of a number, somebody would yell out, Cricket! And everybody would, like, fall on the floor and start rubbing their legs together. <laughs> Whoa! Gee, get out of here, will you? We'll get back to the beginning of the end right after this. It's delicious aroma from filling their dreams with crisp golden Eggo waffles. Hi, Dad. What's for breakfast? Uh, nothing. <laughs> and I can have this? Oh, let go my Eggo. Eggo waffles from Kellogg's, part of this nutritious breakfast. Gently put in the Eggo. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. This is my hair in the morning. So I wash it, just like you. And blow it dry, just like you. So how come my hair looks great despite all this? I discovered Pantene. Pantene's pro-vitamin B5 complex penetrates your hair to give it inner strength so it's healthier, stronger. And it's always beautiful, just like mine. Pantene shampoos and conditioners. Serious care for beautiful hair.
inventory tests prove in most devices, Energizer lasts longer than any other battery. New Energizer. Bye. somewhere. We got one of the smaller grasshoppers. They're not too close, Major. We put that cage up in a hurry, and I don't know how strong it is. A month ago, I was teaching my engineering class at the university. It was safe and secure. And look at me now. You know, I'm 37 years old, and all of a sudden I realized for the first time how much I've taken life for granted. I guess that's something you can't take for granted, Major. Ed, how will you know when you've got the right sound? He'll tell us. How? He'll react to it. And this polygraph will record his reaction. Well, how long will it take? It's a matter of trial and error. It could take 10 minutes or 10 hours. We don't have 10 hours. We're dropping that bomb at dawn. How does this work? Well, I've just attached these wires from the polygraph to the two copper strips at the base of the cage. Now, the locust, like every other living thing, has galvanic reflexes or electrical charges in direct ratio to its activity or emotional stimulation. I don't understand. Well, in other words, when we hit the correct sound or signal, the grasshopper will react to it and the polygraph will record the change. Now, you notice how steady and regular the movement of the needle is now? 
But when we reproduce the grasshopper's call, the lines will become longer and highly irregular. It's like a lie detector test, isn't it? Uh-huh. But it's the first time a grasshopper ever got one. Now, if you'll keep your eye on the needle for any unusual jumps or dips, we'll get to work. your chance. Now it's the Air Force's turn. Operator. Operator, this is a top priority call. Get me General Wagner at the air base. outside will stay put until the temperature reaches 68 degrees. That's about an hour and a half from now. Wagner, Chicago has been evacuated. Unless you receive instructions to the contrary by 0616, that is, that is 90 minutes from now, you will order your B-52 crew to deliver the bomb on the designated target. Repeat the instructions back to me. Trying to fool with that now. Major, get a detail of men up here to move this stuff. And bring some extra grenades. They're some of my staff car. There's a new lab set up for you at my new HQ outside the city. I can't move now. Well, you can't stay here, not with an atom bomb hanging over your head. I don't have any choice. Look, up to now we've been using a filtered signal and it hasn't worked. But it's just possible that the hearing apparatus of the locust can detect harmonic frequencies above the human range. Well, to test these frequencies, I need every minute that's left. If you'll just give me one man to replace Miss Ames. I'm staying. Well, look, this is no time to be worrying about a big story. I'm not worried about a story. Will you please leave before it's too late? No. Major, you and a detail of two men will remain here with Mr. Wainwright. I will station men at three observation posts. One in the suburbs, one near the Art Institute, and one on top of a downtown hotel. Also, a helicopter will spot from above. There will be a getaway car parked downstairs at the main entrance. I suggest you use it by, by 5.45 at the very latest. If you are successful, contact me at once so I can stop the bomb. Sorry to tell you this, pal, but according to the readout here, you're being less than candid with me. Now, I'll ask you one more time. Have you ever been involved in a clandestine bugging operation? Whoa! Holy cow! Whoa! Hey, uh, uh, we'll get back to the movie right after this, okay? Uh, have you ever picked your feet in Poughkeepsie? The best part about running is stopping. But I do it because it makes me feel good. And it works. Same thing goes for my antiperspirant. And vegetables, 100% natural baby food so smooth. They're for beginners only, and only from Gerber. A single serving jar is the start of a perfectly planned feeding system to begin with, to grow with, to stay with for the first two years. Questions? Call Gerber. Pie in minutes, Mrs. Miss Pie. In minutes, in just 10 minutes, you got it made. 10 minutes in the microwave or 20 minutes in an oven. In minutes. And you've got a tender, flaky crust brimming with lots of luscious fruit. Mrs. Miss Pie in minutes. Isn't it nice to have pie this good, this fast? Pie in minutes, Mrs. Miss Pie in minutes. In just 10 minutes, you've got it made. From the 
glitter of Hong Kong, the quiet beauty of Kyoto. From the lovely island of Maui come the inspirations for my new Suzy Wan dinners. Just add your shrimp, beef or chicken to my long grain rice, unique spices and special sauces. You create extraordinary sweet and sour chicken, oriental shrimp or teriyaki beef in just 10 minutes. Let Suzy Wan bring excitement to your table. New Suzy Wan dinner recipes make the ordinary... Swing into the 87th season with Keith Hernandez and the world champion Mets on Sports Channel. College means the opportunity to grow, to learn new ideas and pursue exciting challenges. At the New York Institute of Technology, excellence and opportunity combine to provide an educational and social experience designed to meet your individual needs. Our dedicated faculty and staff provide the warm and supportive environment so necessary for the fulfillment of your very special personal goals. The New York Institute of Technology, a private college where the focus is always on you right now. Chicago GHQ. Emergency lab at Chicago GHQ. Come in, General. Are you there? Now listen to me, Wainwright. We found it, General. We found the frequency. Good. Now stand by. I've got to stop that A-bomb. I'll get right back to you. Chicago GHQ to double B. Chicago GHQ to double B. Chicago GHQ to double B. Over. This is double B. Come in, Chicago GHQ. Over. Hanson here. Your mission is canceled. Return to your base. Repeat the message. Over. Mission canceled. Return to base. Over. Chicago GHQ to emergency lab. Right here. The 
show is yours, Wainwright. All right, get that equipment on the lake in a boat, and I'll be your Pied Piper. I still don't understand. Why didn't you put the oscillator in the boat in the first place to send out the call? Why track them here? Because we'd never get them all. Here, look. Now here we are in downtown Chicago, near the lake. And the locusts are scattered all through the suburbs and on the south side. Now we'll send out the call from here. Yes, but that's going to attract them to us, not into the water. Well, first of all, it's imperative that every last one of the locusts hear the call. Now, in order to do that, we've got to get our amplifier speaker at the highest possible point to get maximum range. Now, we've got ours on the roof of this building, which is one of the tallest in Chicago. Now, once we get them here... Oh, I see. Then the boat will take over. Exactly. Once we have them in the heart of the loop near our location, they'll be within range of the amplifier on the boat. Now, we'll then radio our oscillator signal out to the boat, and they, in turn, will rebroadcast it over their amplifier, attracting the locusts to them and into the lake. We hope. We hope. Well, will you check and see about the temperature? How can we be sure, sir? Hmm? What do you mean? How can you know that we'll get them all? Well, that's where our observation posts and the helicopter come in. From their reports, we'll know the exact location of the locusts at all times. And if it's working. It's 70 degrees, Dad. They're probably starting to move. Emergency lab to all observation posts. Emergency lab to all observation posts. Report in. Over. Observation post number two to emergency lab. Over. Well, what is your location? Over. I'm situated in a store across from the Art Institute on Michigan Boulevard. The street is empty. Nothing in sight. Out. Observation post number three to emergency lab. I'm on the roof of the Drayton Hotel. Don't see any grasshoppers in this area, but the south side's getting some action. Out. Emergency lab to observation post one. Emergency lab to observation post one. You did not report in. What's your location, post one? This is observation post number one. I'm right in the middle of them. I'm just south of 73rd and South Shore Drive. Out. Emergency lab to helicopter. Over. Helicopter to emergency lab. The locusts are active on the south side of Chicago. As yet, there are none in the downtown area. Out. Can you read me emergency lab? Over. Yes, we can read you fine, General. Are you all set? Over. Well, we're not quite ready yet. I think you better hold off a few more minutes. Over. I think we better start now, General. If they should change their direction and start moving away from Chicago, we may not get them all. Over. I don't like your starting until we're completely ready. This boat has to draw them away from you at a split second's notice. Over. I'd like to start, sir. Then go ahead. Miss Rose Rosewood, at last we meet. Finally, I will be able to prove beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are the one who stole my head cheese tarts. Do you recognize this? No. Look a little closer. Do you recognize it now? Recognize it? I can't even see it. This, Miss Rosewood, is a sugar crystal found on the premises of your rose-covered cottage. This is no ordinary sugar crystal. This sugar comes only from the Zantipi sugar beet, grown high in the Peruvian Andes by a cult of crazed sun worshippers living below Machu Picchu, where it is processed and then sold to peasant farmers who transport it by llamas to the sea. There it is loaded onto a ship of dubious Panamanian ancestry. After 
after months of traveling through the seamy underbelly of the world's cold water ports, it slowly makes its way and finally docks at the port of Hackensack. From there, it is taken directly to the mall upstairs, more specifically to the Duncan Ronaldo Donut Shop. There, Baker Fred puts aside just a little bit for me to use in my special head cheese tarts. The same tarts that you stole. Can you deny that? Yes, yes, I stole them. You're very clever, <laughs> Commander Holmes, but not clever enough. Maury and Artie and I will never be caught. Never. But I'll catch you later, big boy. Whoa! Holy cats! And my tarts are back! Oh, man, my tarts! Oh, just in time for the holiday head cheese bake-off festival. Mmm. We want fish sticks that come out of a microwave crunchy, not soggy. That's why we created new Gorton's Microwave Crunchy Fish Sticks and Filets. But are they crunchy? They're mild white fish with no preservatives. But are they crunchy? Packed in Gorton's Advanced Microwave Containers. But are they? So they come out crunchy. Mm. That's what we've been waiting mm. for. Trust Gorton's for fish the way you want it. New Gorton's Microwave Crunchy and Regular Crunchy. The same great fish cooked however you want. No little cinnamon gum freshens breath longer than Big Red. So kiss a little longer, hold tight a little longer, be close a little longer, longer with Big Red. That Big Red fresh Christmas right through it, your fresh breath goes on and on. While you chew it, say goodbye a little longer, make it last a little longer, keep your breath long and be fresh. still are the marines we're looking for a few good men introducing a new kind of antiperspirant shape to glide along your shape a new crystal clear antiperspirant presenting new glide on only from arid not a thick crumbly stick not a drippy roll-on but a new clear clean formula that glides on just turn up the amount you need for effective arid protection so you can get a little closer. New Arid Glide On. Clear Arid Protection that glides on. Mm, now this is my kind of ice cream. Real smooth, you know? You'll never catch me eating any of that frozen yogurt. Ole. Surprise, it's Yoplait. New Yoplait soft frozen yogurt. The ultimate detective writer becomes the ultimate detective. You're Dash O'Hammond, aren't you? You have a unique persuasive style, sir. <laughs> Peter Boyle, Mary Lou Henner, and Frederick Forrest as Hammett, a USA premiere event, Wednesday. This is Bobby the Brain Heenan, and if you people out there have any brains, which I doubt you do, you'll watch All American Wrestling on the USA Network, the best in professional wrestling with the brain. A deadly cobra does the work of the devil. Can Fritz Weaver close the jaws of Satan? Tonight on USA's Saturday Nightmares. From classic comedy to classical music, Dudley Moore is one class act on the next cover story, tomorrow at 9. Sergeant. Yes, sir? Is that the wire that leads to the speaker on the roof? Yes, sir. Oh, plug it into the amplifier, will you? Yes, sir. Post number one to emergency lab. The locusts are leaving this section. They're heading towards Chicago's downtown. 
helicopter to emergency lab. The locusts are moving on the downtown area. Post number three to emergency lab. The locusts are everywhere. They're moving toward your location. I repeat, the locusts are moving toward the emergency lab. Michigan Boulevard is filled with them. They're everywhere. Emergency lab to boat. Emergency lab to boat. It's working, General. It's working. I heard the reports. Wainwright's a boat. Come in, please. Come in. Come in, Wainwright. How soon are you ready? We're ready as soon as we get clearance from observation posts. I'll check them immediately. Out. Boat to helicopter. They're still going in, sir, but it'll be a while before they all reach the downtown section. Wainwright, you'll have to hold out a bit longer. All the locusts haven't reached the downtown area yet. All right, we'll try. Observation post. Report. Over. Post number one. All clear, sir. Post number two. All clear, sir. Helicopter reporting. All clear, sir. They're responding. They're responding. They're swarming. 
heading toward the water. They're climbing all over each other, going into the water. time again, huh? Yeah, time to wrap up things for the day, boy. Yeah, close up the old video vault. Hey, but today was really neat, wasn't it? Yeah, feeling really good. Oh, heck, I didn't tell you. Nah. One honorable mention for my head cheese tarts and the head cheese bake-off. Oh, yeah, man, it really turned out swell, you know? Heck, I'm already looking forward to next week, too. Yeah, let me just get the radio turned off here. Okay, roll it. Ah, good job today, pal. Oh. Oh, man, yeah, next week's going to be really exciting because I'm going to be showing the movie The Jaws of Satan. Whoa! Oh, yeah, it's really scary and exciting, okay? So that's next Saturday right here in the Video Vault, 2 o'clock Eastern and Pacific, 1 o'clock Central. Till then, keep your nose in the wind and your tail to yourself. See you, Pilgrim. <laughs> oh, gee. Alfred Hayes here, and I like to have some crunch with my brunch. That's why I tune in to Mean Gene and All American Wrestling on USA, the network of champions, tomorrow at noon. Introducing Lee Sculptured Nails. Long-lasting like luxury salon nails, but affordable because you do them at home. Lee Sculptured Nails. Affordable. But are they easy? Like nothing you've ever used before. If you can polish your nails, you can do it. Glue on an extension. No form. Brush on the over.